right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kem. I'm your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 121, Functional Pyramid Stone, Black Basalt, Part 2. And today, I will be explaining how the thermoregulatory heat storage properties of black basalt were integrated into the chemical manufacturing sequence at the Pyramid of Nyusare in Abu Sir. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes of Premier Twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage you will not see anywhere else. Check out the members only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for the intro, so without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. To begin, in episode 88, I introduced the concept of black basalt being used as a material for heat storage at the Egyptian Pyramid Chemical Manufacturing Facilities and presented the research that supported this hypothesis. So now I will begin to explain exactly how these thermoregulatory properties were integrated into the system at the Pyramid of Nyusare in Abu Sir, which you can see here. First, let's take a look at the source of the black basalt stone and the archeological evidence on the quarrying and construction process starting here. And I'll quote from this article, Old Kingdom, Basalt Quarrying Activities at Wadden El Faras in the Northern Fayum Desert. The quarry of Wadden El Faras in the Northern Fayum Desert was the source of the basalt used mainly for paving mortuary temple floors in some of the fourth and fifth dynasty pyramid complexes. Due to the high level of Lake Moeris during the fourth and fifth dynasties, these conditions enabled medium-sized black basalt blocks to be transported largely via water to the pyramid construction sites, thus avoiding lengthy and difficult carriage over land. So they know the exact source of the black basalt raw materials and the fact that these stones were transported by water in boats and rafts directly to the construction sites, corroborating the hypothesis from Stephen Meyer that was presented in episode 38, Building the Great Pyramid with Water. Next, here's an image of the black basalt quarry site at Wadden El Faras. And you can see here in the center that black basalt forms and fractures naturally with these polygonal shapes. And a close up here, highlighting the natural fissures and shapes created during the formation of this stone. These pieces were quarried using these natural cracks, and then the stones were put back in the exact same order within the building site. As you can see here, at the southern temple of the Pyramid of Userkoff from the Asita project, that they were precisely replicating the numbered order in which these stones were excavated from the quarry. Every stone had a number, they were extracted in order, and then shipped to the construction site where every numbered stone had a predetermined place within the construction site itself. They were literally capturing the geological signature of the natural bedrock and stone material within the quarry, moving it to another location, and recreating it within the pyramid structures themselves. The Asita project also took some samples of this black basalt at the Pyramid of Userkoff, as presented in episode 88. And here's an image of what this exquisite 
and highly functional construction material looks like under a microscope. So now, on to the pyramid of Nayusare in Abu Sir. And you can see here the same replication of the natural basalt fissures and recreation of the original placement within the Eastern Temple paving stones. And this black basalt paving stone works in conjunction with another component that runs below this Eastern Temple, the red quartzite conduit system, the inlet of which you can see here that begins near the Eastern side of the pyramid. This conduit leads from the inlet here below the black basalt paving stones of the temple in this direction. And the solution is deposited and collected from the red quartzite basin at the far end of the temple. So the entire length of this red quartzite conduit runs below the black basalt paving stones in this direction from west to east, as you can see here. Now, how does it work? First, black basalt is also a dielectric material, as I have been explaining extensively in previous episodes, and it has a higher capacity for storing electric fields than both limestone and granite, as you can see here. Limestone has a dielectric constant of around six, granite from seven to nine, and black basalt has a dielectric constant of 12, which means that it has double the capacity for storing electric fields than limestone, making it an extremely effective material for this type of system. And here you can see a diagram of the temple. This one from Keith Hamilton's Layman's Guide as extrapolated from the original work by board chart. And again, I've highlighted here the natural fissures and placement of the black basalt stone as it was in the quarry and replicated precisely when the stone was laid into the floor of the temple. And the conduit system runs from the inlet here, below the floor of the temple, through here, and out to the collection bowl at the end of the temple complex here. So the lightning that I have been explaining regarding the function of the Great Pyramid wasn't just striking on the Giza Plateau. Thunderstorms are moving systems, and the lightning they generate would have been utilized by all of the structures along the west bank of the Nile River, which were all interconnected and a topic for a future episode, specifically regarding the pyramids and temples of the Abu Sir system. So the electric fields, being distributed through these dielectric construction materials would be stored within the black basalt stone of the temple floor. And black basalt function as a heat storage device for the thermal energy associated with this process, causing the paving stones to heat up and stay hot. Now, before I get into why this was integrated into the chemical manufacturing sequence, let's review the research presented in episode 88, showing and proving that black basalt stone can be used as a thermoregulatory heat storage material. First, and I'll quote here, utilization of some Egyptian raw materials in rock wool industry for thermal and acoustic insulation. Regarding black basalt, the work assesses the suitability of basalt from three localities in Egypt to produce rock wool that is intended for thermal and acoustic insulation of buildings and industrial equipment. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Next. From this article, what are basalt fibers? Basalt products resist flame continuous temperatures of up to 700 degrees Celsius, chemicals, including both acids and bases, and are very good acoustic and electrical insulators and have good mechanical properties. All right, now we're really getting somewhere, but there's more. The next article, investigation of thermal properties of some basalt samples 
in Egypt. This work aims in studying the temperature dependence of the thermal properties, thermal diffusivity, K specific heat, CP, and thermal conductivity of some basalt group samples collected from different regions in the eastern desert of Egypt. The average values of the thermal conductivity of these investigated samples lie within this range, which means that these samples are considered as thermal insulating materials. Okay, even more research specifically referring to the black basalt stone from Egypt, supporting the exact function that I just described. But let's do one more just for good measure. And this article here, the utilization of basalt stone as a sensible heat storage material. Thermal energy storage plays an important role in the conservation of thermal energy in many processes, such as waste heat recovery and load leveling at power plants, including those utilizing alternative energy sources. Hmm, alternative energy sources like lightning. The objective of this study is to investigate many aspects of basalt stone as a material of heat storage. So now we know that black basalt is a material that is capable of storing the heat energy generated during its interaction with the electric fields from lightning. Now, how was this heat used at the Pyramid of Nyuserae for this chemical manufacturing process? Well, it's pretty simple. To prevent the coagulation of the solution or precipitation of dissolved particles as it is transferred from the pyramid reaction chambers into the collection bowl at the end of the conduit system. So if you have a solution that contains suspended particles in a saturated solution, or the product itself became highly viscous when cooled down, you wouldn't want it clogging up your pipe or losing valuable particles as it flowed through this conduit system, leaving you with a loss of valuable suspended particles or a huge blockage forming in your conduit system. So you integrate a thermal insulator that can store heat energy to keep the products in a smoothly flowing solution from start to end carried from the inlet here through this conduit system, effectively depositing all of the desired material into the collection bowl at the end. The thermoregulatory heat storage properties of the black basalt paving stones were critical in maintaining the high temperature resulting from the influx of electric fields harnessed from lightning strikes that was required to prevent the coagulation or loss of suspended particles during distribution of the product solution into this collection bowl. Now, the question you should be asking yourself, why the distance to the collection site and why utilize red quartzite? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a topic that is directly related to the function of the OSIRIS shaft, which will be coming up in an exclusive research special including new footage from our private special permission access into this underground chamber system during this month's members only episode. Now, last but not least, here is another teaser of a major ongoing project implementing a variety of new technology to collect a vast array of critical data in my quest to fully understand and explain the chemical engineering and lightning-based electrical physics of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. Check this out. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 121 
Functional Pyramid Stone Black Basalt Part 2. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and in this week's Sunday site visit, I will take you along with me on the recent Land of Chem 2024 Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour during our private special permission access to the Pyramids of Abu Sir. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing physics and chemistry and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget, click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section and thelandofchem.com. Links in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt East for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>